Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today I'm excited to give you a comparison between the iconic Toyota 2JZ engine and the relative newcomer to the block in the MK5 BMW B58 power plant. We're going to have these engine components completely apart on the bench. We're going to look at a comparison between things like the crankshaft, the block, the cylinder head, the valve train, basically what separates these two engines. They're both six cylinder engines. They're both turbocharged, but there's a lot of time and engineering development between the two. And we're going to see how they measure up. Now these two engine blocks are both six cylinders, but that's about where the similarities stop. The BMW is a lightweight aluminum alloy design with spray in bore liners, whereas the 2JZ is a basic cast iron engine block. Both utilize a two bolt main cap and the BMW has complemented that two bolt main cap with a girdle that ties to the pan rails. That's gonna be a necessity because this is a, again, a lightweight aluminum alloy engine and inherently doesn't have the same strength as the cast iron block. The main caps on the 2JZ sit down in the main saddle register, which is very typical of most engines that aren't doweled. Whereas the BMW uses a bit more complicated design that allows the main cap to penetrate down into the block to create its own register. There'll be some machining involved to fit a billet main cap to the B58 engine block. Both engine blocks utilize piston squirters and it looks like the BMW has ample oil drain back as well as the 2JZ. Both of these engines utilize 10 millimeter hardware to hold the main caps in place and both have main sub kits available through ARP. Now at a glance, both of these ARP stud kits look about the same length coming out of the deck of the block. However, when you remove the studs from each engine block, you'll realize that the B58 stud is quite a bit longer. And the purpose of that is to be pulling from the area down in the mains, not up at the top of the deck, minimizing distortion at the deck and minimizing distortion of the bore. Most late model engines utilize a longer piece of hardware holding the head to the block to minimize again distortion at the deck and distortion in the bore. Now let's take a look at the pistons and rods between the two engines. Keep in mind there's over 20 years of engineering development time between these two engines. So a lot of the stuff that you're gonna see in the B58 is just stuff that most modern engines are equipped with. Both pistons utilize a coated skirt and the B58 has a thinner ring set than the 2JZ. As you move to the crown of the piston, you'll see that the 2JZ utilizes a larger dish with its eight and a half to one compression ratio, whereas the B58 in its direct injection is allowed to get away with 11 to one compression, even though it's a force inducted engine. Now the 2JZ and B58 pistons are quite a bit different. The 2JZ utilizes a full round design, whereas the B58 is a strutted. But if you think back to that small end of the connecting rod in that V shape, they've continued that shape up through the pin piers into the crown of the piston, building an incredibly strong and lightweight part. Taking a look at the rod bolts in the 2JZ versus the B58, I would say the 2JZ has a better rod bolt. Now, the B58 engine has a different design as far as how it holds the big end of the rod together, so you need less rod bolt available because you have this cracked big end. Looking at the big ends of both connecting rods, you can see that the 2JZ is quite a bit different than the B58. The 2JZ uses a pin design to locate the rod cap, whereas the B58 is a cracked rod design, and the 2JZ has a hole in the rod bearing that's gonna be pressurizing oil up on the thrust side of the piston. Both rod bearings are coated, however, the B58 has a different type of coating due to the auto start stop design on the late model engine. The cracked rod design is nothing new. It's been around since at least the early 90s. When these two pieces meet, they basically go back to where they originally were as one piece and they don't utilize a dowel. It's worth noting that neither one of these connecting rods is really field serviceable because you can't resize them because you can't get the dowel pins for the JZ and you can't remachine this cracked surface. Now the B58 is a slightly longer rod and they're both a full floating bushed design. However, the B58 has a lot of machining done to the top of the rod, removing weight 
and aiding in a different piston design. So this type of machining at the top of the rod isn't new. The Subaru factory engines are done the same way. You basically have to lose some weight off the top of the connecting rod. And because most of the combustion forces are pushing down on the rod, the top of the rod strap only has to deal with the direction change as the piston moves away from top dead center. Looking at the differences between the two piston pins, you'll notice that the 2JZ is a longer pin. The B58 pin is slightly thicker wall and also has additional machining, removing material from the outside of each end of the pin, making it a lighter part without reducing its strength. Both of these crankshafts are forged steel and the BMW does have a larger stroke crankshaft. So it's a 94.6 millimeter stroke versus the 2JZ's 86 millimeter stroke. The BMW crankshaft also has smaller journal diameters on both the rod and the main and uses a direct oiling with a small reservoir at the bearing face, which I'd seen that before on some Ferrari crankshafts. The 2JZ, the oil has to turn to make it out of the main galley up to the rod journal, arguably worse oiling than you have in this direct oiling crank on the BMW. The BMW does have an integrated timing chain gear onto the back of the crankshaft, whereas the 2JZ has a timing belt that's driven off the nose of the crankshaft. Some of the earlier BMW performance cars were plagued with the gear failure on the nose of the crank where the timing gear would break and the whole engine would crash. So this is a constant evolution in technology with these BMW engines versus a dated proven design on the 2JZ. The 2JZ also drives the oil pump off of the nose of the crankshaft, whereas the BMW is a chain driven oil pump. Both very strong crankshafts, hard to break either one of them. The BMW is a bit lighter crankshaft. And if you take a look down the counterweights, you can see that some of the counterweights are staged around to aid in balancing, whereas the 2JZ is just a basic full counterweighted design. The 2JZ is an interference fit slip on balancer onto the nose of the crankshaft, whereas the BMW is a bolt on hub. The Toyota 2JZ utilizes a simple crankshaft driven garroter style pump. The BMW is a bit more complicated. It's a variable displacement vane style pump that can vary the amount of oil volume and pressure depending what the engine needs. It's a chain driven device off of the crankshaft. So let's have a look inside of the Toyota 2JZ oil pump. This is a very simple design. Corroder pump, a turbo oil pump. So if you're turbocharging a non-turbo 2JZ, I recommend moving to the turbo pump because it has a wider section volume, which is gonna move more oil. It has a bypass valve. So if this oil pump exceeds a given pressure, it's gonna bypass oil out of this hole. And if we look into this BMW pump, it is quite a bit different. This oil pump is a fairly complicated part. It's a vein style pump that is variable displacement. So this housing section is going to move up and down depending on what oil is needed. And it's also a dual stage pump. So if we can get this thing apart, we can have a look at how many moving pieces it is. But as you can see, as this rotates, these veins swing. And this is a used pump. We're not going to reuse the pump. And I don't recommend doing this if you're going to reuse the pump. But if we move this section, you can see how it actuates changing the volume of the pump. So then if you get into the pressure section of the pump, you've got uh, quite a few pieces. So now that we have both oil pumps apart on the bench, you can see the 2JZ is a very simple design. And again, more technology, more complexity. This is actually a dual stage pump. So it has a scavenging section on one side of the pump and a variable displacement vein style pump on the other side of the pump. So having a look at the oil pump housing itself, you have your pressure section on one side of the pump with a integrated pickup tube. And then you have a scavenge section that's pulling from a channel of the engine block itself. The Toyota 2JZ oil pump, again, very simple piece. You have the oil inlet, the oil outlet, your gear rotor housing, and the bypass valve. Now with both of these cylinder heads on the table, you can see that there's quite a few differences between the 2JZ cylinder head and the B58 cylinder head. When you look at the combustion chamber on the 2JZ, there's not as much shrouding going on, whereas the B58 has a fair share of shrouding around the valves. The 2JZ's valves are larger the B58 has to make a little bit more room in the chamber because it has this direct injection nozzle. So part of the reason why there's so much 
uh, smaller valve area and further valve spacing is we have to fit the fuel injector into the combustion chamber on a direct injected engine. You also have this projected area around the spark plug. It's basically putting that spark plug further out into the uh, fire that's going on inside the engine. Now that does create some problems if you overheat the spark plug because you can damage the threads on the spark plug and damage the threads on the cylinder head itself and that is uh, kind of a further insulted situation by the two port exhaust on the B58 early models. So you've got high back pressure, you've got a lot of heat in the cylinder, you've got the spark plug projected out into the combustion chamber and that can cause some issues on its own. As far as the surface of the cylinder head, both of these engines are relying on four bolts per cylinder to promote gasket sealing. The 2JZ has less distance or area between the two combustion chambers. We have a long running history of how the 2JZ head gaskets work. We have a long running history of where they fail and how to hurt them and where they live good. So there's not much that you can really harp on a 2JZ under say 1400 horsepower as far as head gasket sealing, whereas the B58 is still heavily in development as the guys continue to push the engines further and further. So the width of the 2JZ cylinder head is quite a bit smaller than the B58 head, but that's because they've got an incorporated longer intake port on the B58 head that bolts to a integrated air to water intercooler intake manifold, which opens up some area on the front of the B58 chassis, the MK5, which is gonna help promote the cooling system. So the B58 and the MK5 have a fantastic well-engineered cooling system. Really, really nice stuff. Uh, hard to argue with the technology that's incorporated there. And again, this is the difference between something that was built in the 90s versus something that's current to date. Uh, the exhaust side of the cylinder head is wider also, and that's because you've got this merger as you go into this six cylinder engine only breathing to two exhaust ports. So when you look at the B58 head versus the 2JZ head, the 2JZ head is not a cylinder head that has killer airflow, but it is a robust design that is very uh, forgiving when it comes to turbocharged applications. The 2JZ cylinder head is a bit shorter than the B58, but keep in mind that the 2JZ uses an external timing belt drive, whereas the B58 uses a timing chain, so all of the sprockets and timing chain and oiling system are kind of entombed inside the cylinder head, so you've got to add a bit of casting material to have space for that wet system to exist inside of the engine. Now the B58 is available with two different exhaust port configurations. There's a six port exhaust cylinder head and a two port exhaust cylinder head. More than one manufacturer has moved into a turbo fold style cylinder head to help trap heat to help low speed turbocharger response. You can see this in Mercedes and BMW's hot V designs and the Honda K20C. Many engines have now moved to this single or two exhaust port configuration to help trap that heat, to help spool that turbocharger as early as possible. And at factory levels of exhaust mass flow, it's probably an okay design. As you increase boost and increase the power output of the engine, you need to be mindful that the heat that's going to burn up the internal components of the engine, its only way out of the cylinder is through the exhaust port. With that being said, a six port exhaust cylinder head will always outperform a single or twin port exhaust cylinder head. As far as the head gaskets go, both the B58 and the 2JZ both utilize a multi-layer steel gasket. Most modern engines use a very thin gasket and they're counting on the engine block and cylinder head staying flat and keeping a good seal on it. It does have a bit of a wave ring around the center piece. And that's a pretty large departure from the rolled steel thick core that's on the factory 2JZ gasket. The factory 2JZ gasket is over 50 thousandths thick and has excellent durability over 12, 1300 horsepower versus the BMW's aluminum block. They're relying on the thin shim and the shape of the engine to do the sealing. So as we noticed before, it has those long head bolts that go down below the cylinders and that's try to keep deformation at the deck to a minimum. This is a good illustration of the different bore sizes between the two engines, the B58's 82 millimeter bore versus the Jay-Z's 86 millimeter bore. When you think about bore size, you need to think about valve area because valve area ultimately becomes how you're moving the air in and out of the engine and promoting that horsepower. So here's a VVTI 
inlet camshaft for a 2JZ. So the 2JZ is available with a non-variable inlet cam and a variable inlet cam where the cam sprocket can advance the cam on the intake side of the engine only. In comparison, the B58 engine has variable camshafts on both the intake side and the exhaust side of the engine. And these cam sprockets are what BMW labels Vanos and they can both advance the camshaft or retard the camshaft independently depending on engine speed and engine load. Now let's move into the valve train differences between the 2JZ and the B58. Here is a valve bucket. This valve bucket rides directly on the tip of the valve and is actuated directly by the lobe of the camshaft. As you move into the B58 engine, you have a hydraulic lifter and a rocker arm on the exhaust side of the engine, a hydraulic lifter and a rocker arm on the intake side of the engine, but then you have to add in BMW's Valvetronic. Now let's have a peek at the B58's Valvetronic valve train. The Valvetronic valve train is nothing short of a modern marvel. You have a camshaft lobe actuating a second rocker arm that is on an eccentric shaft that is turned by a servo motor. So this servo motor here is gonna rotate this gear and change the fulcrum point of the rocker arm offering infinitely variable valve lift. So you can have optimized valve timing at 2000 RPM or 7000 RPM all through this Valvetronic system. The Valvetronic system is so advanced that some of the BMW gasoline engines don't even have throttle bodies because the ECU can regulate engine speed based off of how much air is entering the engine through the Valvetronic system. Another thing the B58 engine has is a mechanical fuel pump. This is a high pressure pump for the direct injection system. So a cam lobe is gonna be actuating this mechanical fuel pump to make extremely high fuel pressures that you don't need in a port injected engine, but are a must in a direct inject engine. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. As you go back through the clips and you look at the different engine components as they're laid out on the bench, please keep in mind that a lot of time has passed between the development of the 2JZ and the constant evolution of this BMW six cylinder. So you wouldn't pick up a 20 year old phone and expect it to work like a brand new iPhone. So keep in mind that for you younger guys, this is a modern masterpiece, whereas the 2JZ is it's kind of an old dated platform, but still very potent, very powerful. You've got guys that are going in the fives with a 2JZ engine, and this engine is still quite a bit in its developmental stages. So which engine is the right engine? Well, that's up to you. I've owned both the MK4 Super with a 2JZ and also the MK5 Super with the B58. I've also had a lot of fun racing the 2JZ engine over the past 15, 16, 17 years. So I'm going to be partial to that 2JZ engine probably for the rest of my life, just based off of the positive positive experiences I've had with it. So I would like to hear what you think about the differences and I know there's probably some modern BMW technicians watching this video and if there's any information you'd like to share to bring us further up to speed on the B58, feel free to comment below. Thanks and we'll see you next time.